And now, your first alert forecast with meteorologist Kyle Dickens. All right, before we get to weather, take a look at this video. This is some wild video of that gust NATO that hit Bureau County yesterday afternoon. And, and I'll, I'll say this, Kyle, for me, this was the first time I've ever heard of a gust NATO. So uh, <laughs> I know I can't be the only one out there. So, uh, so what is this? What is a gust NATO? So it's, it's great. And it's great video because what we did see with this is we got a lot of reports of a tornado on the ground. And even though it's in the family of a tornado, what it is, is you get outflow winds or winds pushing out of a thunderstorm. And what you can get along that line of pushing winds, you get a little spin up going, usually rather weak, but uh, it's uh, definitely pretty ominous when you see one. You don't, I, I wouldn't want to be, uh, be in the path of that. So um, at this time, this was near Buda, just to the east of Buda and near Sheffield. Um, and my good friend Johnny Gable, I want to appreciate him for uh, sending us this video and giving us some great reports out in the field yesterday when we were on air but uh, yeah great stuff there and that was tornado warned at the time here in southwestern bureau county on top of that gus nato we also had a confirmed tornado as well had an ef1 tornado up in the morrison area part just really it was a massive yeah. storm system that we had moved through and uh, really a lot of hail reports hail was the big thing so let's jump to the map and look at all the reports we have from this uh, uh, what we would call an outbreak yesterday you could see a lot of those blue icons on there represent all the hail reports. We had reports up to baseball sized hail in some of our hometowns, but you can see we have this funnel cloud that was reported here uh, just to the south of Burlington. And then the big thing was up here in the Whiteside County area, northwest of Sterling Rock Falls, which is right there and just to the east of Morrison, an EF1 tornado with winds of 110 miles an hour, path about five miles long, and uh, to do some damage out there as well. So one confirmed tornado out of that. That system long gone, 46 degrees, cool weather in its wake, and even cooler weather coming into the picture tonight. And it's already starting to make its way in. 47 right now, Peoria. You look off to the northwest, though, we're already up to 38 in Dubuque. Winter-like temperatures for sure. First alert Doppler radar. You know, we were tracking tornadoes yesterday. We're tracking snow showers now. You can see a few speckles of white up there, especially up towards Dubuque. That's part of the storm system that's going to be making its way in. Again, not looking to see anything accumulating, but just pesky snow showers. System that uh, caused all our issues, pushed off now, uh, causing some issues here uh, towards the eastern seaboard. Heavy activity down in, uh, from the Birmingham area up towards Nashville, uh, Huntsville, Nashville, moving east into eastern uh, parts of Tennessee and into Georgia. But here's our next weather maker. You can see a uh, low pressure, a couple troughs, uh, disturbance that's making its way in. Again, folks, not looking to see anything accumulating. It's just going to be a pesky uh well, I would hate to say a winter like storm, but it's got snow in it. So that moves through and this looks ominous, but it's going to be scattered in nature. Again, you're going to go outside tomorrow. You might see some flakes flying around that moves through in the morning hours we will clear out. The thing is, is we're going to clear these clouds out overnight. What that's going to allow us to do, we call it radiational cooling. Clouds at night kind of act like a blanket. There's no sun to heat the uh, surface. So all that heat that we get during the day escapes fast and we could get down into below freezing temperatures as we head through Sunday, kind of a rinse and repeat. We're not going to see snow, but clouds. And then as the night goes on, we'll see those clouds erode away. You can see showers build in for Monday, spotty in nature. Same story for Tuesday. So two shots of rain. The good thing is we're really not going to see much in the way of accumulation. And that's good because as we head into next week, we're going to be really concerned with that. Uh, uh, those crests along the Mississippi. So we do not want to add any more rain jet stream pattern here for really the next foreseeable future. We're going to maintain this cold pattern. As you can see that jet stream really hugging the uh, southern coast here into the Gulf states and that allows that cold Canadian air to sink down. So we're going to stay either at or below average with looks like a little bit more emphasis on below average here, at least for the next seven days. Temperatures tomorrow again, mid thirties will start to climb out a little bit on <laughs> here on Saturday, uh, mid forties for our highs dropping again as we get into Sunday night. That's going to be the coldest night. Look at that freezing and just below freezing across the area. Climb up a little bit, maybe close to 50 on Sunday. But again, we'll be back down into that uh, uh, almost freezing category. We do have freeze warning west of the Mississippi River uh, and then also up here into Joe Davies County does not include the Metro Quad Cities freeze watch in effect for the entire area. 
uh, as well. So something we're going to watch throughout the weekend for the next six hours. Temperatures dropping down close to freezing again. Can't rule out a quick snow shower as we get to the early morning hours. We'll have the most reliable seven day forecast here in 30 seconds. Since 1946, it's been about more than just do track, more than just profits, more than just being the biggest credit union or growing the fastest. As a financial cooperative, it's always been about being a part of our communities, for our members, for everyone, in the everyday and in the long run, giving back, paying it forward, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's always been possible with DoTrack. All right, folks, this time of year, we're right around 63, 64. By the end of the seven days, 65 is our average. So we're going to be running close to 20 degrees below average as we start the day tomorrow. 20% chance to see those snow showers. Cloudy on Sunday. Then the rain chances for the start of the week. We start to inch that temperature up as we get to Thursday, but still below average for this time of year. All right, next at 10, extra.